By the end of this video, you're gonna have a step-by-step -step guide on how to get monetized on YouTube. In fact, you're gonna have seven different steps that you could take to get monetized as quickly as humanly possible. It doesn't matter what niche you're in, doesn't matter what kind of content you're creating, you could use this guide to get more views, get more subscribers, and get monetized quicker. Just like this creator right here that I help implement this and gain over 200,000 subscribers and now makes a full-time living from YouTube. And the same thing happened to this creator right here, but instead, they gain over 300,000 subscribers. And the same thing can happen to you, so long as you implement everything I'm gonna share with you without skipping anything. So step number one in this process is you need to actually go through and determine what niche you're in. Now listen, these are going to be a few of the things that you're going to have to do in this process. And I know you see them right here, but you're not actually going to know what to do, which is exactly why I want to take you through step by step. So step number one, you need to actually determine what your niche is. And in order to determine your niche, you need to get as specific as possible, but without getting too specific. For example, if you were doing real estate, you might want to talk about a really large city or a large area in a state. You, you don't want to go so specific to a neighborhood because then what's going to happen is they're not actually going to be an audience for the content you're going to be creating. For example, if I come over here and look up a random neighborhood in Los Angeles, we're going to find a random neighborhood here like Fairfax. If I come over here to YouTube and I say I want to do Fairfax real estate, guess what's going to end up happening? If I look at videos like this, we're talking about 1.7 thousand views, 13 thousand views in one year, 800 views in four months. This is not going to be a lot of reach, but if I come over here and type in Los Angeles real estate, guess what we're going to see? 1.2 million views, 52,000 views, a lot more views over a larger search. So the niche that you go after needs to be large enough that a lot of people are getting a lot of views in it, but it needs to be small enough that you can stick out. And essentially what you want to do now is type in your niche. So we're going to do Los Angeles real estate here. Now I know this probably isn't your niche, but this is going to allow us to walk through for a niche that isn't my own. And I'm going to share with you step by step exactly what I would do if I was in this niche. But before we dive into that, I need you to smash that subscribe button. If you want to go quicker on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, or any other social media platforms, I literally upload a video every single day about how to grow on them, and you're not going to want to miss my next upload. And all you have to do is apply this list to the niche that you're in. Also, if you're already creating content, you're going to want to go through and redo this because you might have a ton of different limiting beliefs or things along the lines of that where you might actually be walking down the wrong road. And the worst thing that you could possibly do when you're trying to get monetized on YouTube is waste any time. So the next thing that we want to do is actually go through and build up a competitor's list. So what we're going to do here, Los Angeles real estate for sale. This is going to be one of the search terms for this niche. So we're going to go through and actually see all the different people that are making content under here. Now, ideally what you want to make sure that you're doing is you need to have at least five different competitors within your niche. And here's the deal. If there aren't five different competitors in your niche and you're not really, really early to something, guess what? You probably don't actually have a niche because if nobody is uploading or nobody's consuming the content that you want to be creating, it's a sign that YouTube doesn't actually have an audience for that or you might be way too zoomed in or way too zoomed out. And if you change your positioning a little bit, it could lead to you getting the views that you want. Okay. So in terms of people within this niche, if we look at this guy, Darren, he looks like he might be in this niche. And yes, he is. He uploads a bunch of different videos showcasing LA real estate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this over here. I'm going to put this down here and we're going to save him right there. But we're not done because, again, we need to find a few other people. The artist of real estate. This guy might be doing the same thing. Yep real estate agent serving los angeles again we're going to take him right here we're going to delete this garrison team real estate we're going to come under here okay they're doing it but i don't actually think they're doing a good job of this at all so i'm going to end up skipping them again you don't want your competitor to be somebody that you can't learn anything because you're going to want to learn things from these people, which is why you want to be going after people that have a decent following or that are seeing some decent growth. Now, I thought this guy's videos might be a little bit better, but they're not. So we're going to skip away from him too. Now, we did skip past a few really big people that I thought, eh, I'm not going to choose them, but I think we're going to have to go through and choose them. So we come over here. Arvin is doing a solid job at this. And then the other person that I saw is Ennis. Now, Ennis is huge in this niche, so we don't want to 
do everything that he does, but we do want to make sure that we include him on this list. So if I come down a little bit, we're going to see Ennis here. Boom. Now, we have a list of four people. Like I said, ideally four, five people. You might only have one or two, but you need your competitors list. And now we need to go through and see what kind of content each of them creates. So we're going to want to put a few spaces under here. And by the way, this is the research that you need to be doing every single time that you create a niche. So this person right here is typically focused on luxury real estate posting one time a week. If I look at the artists of real estate, go under videos, this person posts, eh, call it twice a month, not that much more than that. Posting two times a month, post a bit more broad real estate content. If we come under Arvin, Arvin is posting, it looks like two times a week, we'll call it. Eh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll call it two times a week. So seven times a month, two times a week. Right now, it's really focusing on critiquing Ennis. So he does content that is critiquing celebrities within this space. And then if we look at Ennis over here, he really just does like super, super luxury stuff. Like this is a yacht. This is Beverly Hills Mansion, other different yachts, other different mansions. So essentially, he's really uploading like three times a month. So we're looking at three times a month, uploading super high end luxury real estate. So now we need to answer the question of what kind of content we're going to be creating. We already answered the frequency of the content in which our competitors are uploading. But as you can see, the people that are uploading the most are uploading one time a week. But on average, I would say that people are uploading three to four times a month in this niche. So ideally, they're uploading one time a week. And essentially, you want to ask yourself whether or not this can be a competitive advantage for you. Because if you look at my channel, now I upload about several different things, but I used to only upload about how I grow on TikTok. And guess what? I posted way less back then. In fact, I only posted three times a week, four times a week back then, because I only spoke about one thing. Now remember, you want to use your first niche as a wedge in order to expand outwards. So I use that to grow with how to grow on TikTok, got a few hundred thousand subscribers, and now I'm breaking into how to grow on YouTube, how to grow on Instagram, and any other social media apps that come along the way, I'm also going to break into that. You need to think about your content the same exact way because can your frequency be used to your advantage? And I'm going to say no within this niche. In fact, I would say that we should only be posting one time a week or two times a month in this niche based off of what I actually did research on. On top of that, I see that this person does luxury, this person does a bit more broad, this person does critiquing celebrities within the space, this person does super high in luxury. When it comes to what my edge is going to be and what kind of content I'm gonna to wanna to create, I'm gonna to wanna to create content for normal people living in LA. We're not gonna do super high end. I wanna do things $3 million and less, which yes, that might sound crazy to you depending on where you live in the world, but in LA, that's gonna be super normal. And I bet that there's actually going to be a ton of different people that are interested in content like that. So that's going to be my edge. But remember, after I do more and try to come up with seven to eight different videos to create, I might actually realize that that's not going to be my edge and I'm going to have to do something else. So this is going to be something that constantly changes. But essentially, you want to build out a plan for your next seven to eight videos to get monetized on YouTube because that really is all it should take once you get it right. So now what we need to do is actually come through and we need to build out the seven to eight different videos that we're going to create. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of all of these right here. We're going to come back over here and we're going to look up Los Angeles real estate for sale. Now this is going to be a very broad term, but I'm going to filter here for recently uploaded. We're going to see a bunch of different videos. For example, this video right here, I would suggest that we do a video like this. So what this is, is this is a named estate and essentially we want to go through and we want to create a video like this. So we're going to write down named estates or famous homes for sale in LA. And that's going to be one of the topics that we're going to be going after. And what we want to note 
His video is four minutes long. Ideally, if you want to get monetized on YouTube, your content should be eight minutes or longer because that's really all that YouTube's going to push in terms of monetization. If we come down over here, new law, Los Angeles begins taking over private property, warning to America. This could be another good video to make if we want to go the news route, but that wasn't necessarily the edge that we were going after. So I am not going to do that. Now, I know what you're starting to think. Wow, Rob, this process looks incredibly tedious. Is there anything that you could show us to make this a little bit easier? And the number one tool that I have to make this easier is going to be vidIQ. Essentially, what you could do is you can log into vidIQ, and from here, you're going to be able to see really quickly different search volumes for different places. For example, if I look up LA real estate for sale, it's going to show us how many people are actually searching for that a month, and then it'll It'll show us LA luxury real estate, it'll show us luxury home tour, luxury real estate, Los Angeles real estate, and essentially what this is going to show us is how many views we could potentially get in a 30-day period for specific searches. Now, if we change this out instead of LA, what if we put Malibu here? And maybe we should spell Malibu correctly, but we're going to see that this is actually less views. But if we go under beach house here, that is actually the most viewed search term that we've seen so far. And what you want to make sure that you're doing is including keywords like this. And this is going to allow you to uncover not only what keywords are going to help get you the most views, but if we click on this and we scroll down, we're going to see a bunch of the really, really good thumbnails that are showing under here and a bunch of really good titles. And this makes it way quicker sometimes than just searching through YouTube. So if you want to use a tool like this, you could get started today at the pin comment below for just one dollar for the next 30 days it's an absolute no-brainer it's either going to help you get monetized on youtube quicker or you just cancel it and on top of that it's actually got a bunch more things like there's a bunch of different competitor lists we could literally come in add all the competitors that we added before and it's going to allow you to really easily filter and see what their most viewed videos are or if you come under ideas it's going to also give you a bunch of different ideas that are specific to your niche once you attach your account to this now this tool is an absolute no-brainer like I said, $1 for the next 30 days, and I'd strongly suggest that you do it if you think that this research process looks a little tedious because it makes it way easier. And if we keep scrolling, we're going to see some other things. For example, this one right here inside a panoramic apartment owned by the Medici family in Florence, I could do the same thing in LA. But if we come back to this right here, what do we find? That I already have this as an idea. So we need to keep on scrolling. And remember, this will likely take a lot of time for you to actually come through and come up with a plan. For example, apartment values collapse. Again, not something that we want to do. None of these are something that we want to do. So we need to come back up here and we need to look for something else. For example, homes for sale in Los Angeles, California. And what we're going to find is there aren't a lot of videos that are actually getting a lot of views. But if we come down here, this guy again comes up. Now, this guy was not showing up at all within our initial research, but he's doing a really good job at capturing people's attention. Now, of course, he's really fear-mongering here, but this is a huge lesson for anybody that's trying to get monetized on YouTube. If you see somebody else doing something in your niche that you completely disagree with, sometimes you can't just take the opposite stance of them. Like if you were talking in real estate right now about it's the best time ever to buy, guess what's going to happen? Nobody's going to believe you and you're not going to get any reach. So a lot of times what you have to do is actually change the positioning of your content to have it be similar thumbnails, similar titles, but you need to make sure then that your content is actually completely different and you can sell a different story within your content, but you need to lead with what somebody truly wants to believe because essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to find your audience. You're trying to tell them what they want to believe because that's going to make all the biggest difference, especially in the beginning. If you're trying to change people's mind, it's going to be a complete waste of time. So I can come under here and I can do something along the lines of negative videos about LA real estate but have a positive ending. So essentially what you're going to be doing is talking poorly about a bunch of different things in LA real estate, but you come in as a savior at the end with a really good deal or a really good neighborhood or a really good condo or a really good apartment or house or whatever the case is, and you're going to be helping somebody out. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to start to get a little bit more specific. For example, what $1 million buys you in Los 
Angeles. And if we come under here, what we're going to find is there are a bunch of other really good videos here. So this is what a million buys you in California, house hunting in Los Angeles, what million dollars gets you in 2024. So this is going to be another video here. What's one million get you in 2024 in Los Angeles. And now if we scroll down, Maybe you'll see some other homes like this, and maybe we'll be able to see a bunch of different other people that make content like this. No, this guy's content has nothing to do with this, but essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be showing people this. Now, this is another one right here. I bought this $1.2 million home, and now I can't afford it. I like this video a lot. I bought XXS, and now I can't afford it. So essentially what you want to do here is, again, you want to spin this in O. Oh, this person spent this much money. This is what their salary was, and now they can't afford it, but you could have done this. And this is somebody's biggest fear when they're buying a house. So again, you wanna make sure that you're addressing that. We've come down here, how this 23 year old bought a $12 million LA mansion. This could be another really good type of content, and this can show you all the different opportunities out there for what type of real estate. Like for example, if you make a video like this, you could go through how we started at 1 million. He started at $5 million. He looked at a $20 million house. Basically, you're running the gamut of what somebody's looking at, and you can insert yourself as the agent as, oh, this is the reason that this person was able to do this. So how this XX bought a, we're going to put a money sign, LA Mansion. And essentially, you could go through and do this for all different neighborhoods. Now, at this point, we've got five ideas here, but I want to get a little bit more specific. For example, if we start going Malibu Real Estate, for sale and we can go through and you can get rid of Malibu and you can put anything here. Now we're going to see a bunch of different videos that are doing really good. Like this video right here, again, this is going to be inside a XXX. We're going to have an attribute here. We have a place and then type. And essentially what we could do is we can come through and do this for $5 million for $1 million, for $3 million, for $10 million, for $100 million, for whatever the case is. And now we get into the removing limiting beliefs part of this video. And this is actually going to be my favorite part of this video to record because at this point, if you've gone through and done this, all you have to do is begin creating content, but your mind's going to play a few tricks on you. So you want to make sure that we get rid of those. Now, when it comes to limiting beliefs that you really need to get rid of, there are really only three of them. The first one is that you're going to start uploading tomorrow. You're going to start uploading today. In fact, the best time to begin uploading on YouTube was yesterday, and I regret not getting started earlier. And you probably look at me and say, Rob, you're nuts, but you're doing so well right now. But yeah, think about how much bigger I'd be if I got started earlier, or how much knowledge I would have if I started earlier, which leads me into the second limiting belief, which is that you need to know everything. You don't need to know everything. You're never going to know everything because things are constantly changing and all you need to do is jump in the pool in order to learn how to swim. I mean, think about it. You would have never learned how to ride a bike had you not started to ride the bike. You probably watched videos about it or didn't because there weren't videos about it back then, but you get the point I'm trying to make. You need to just start doing it. That is how you're gonna learn. And then finally, you need to understand something. You should not take any of this personal. If you don't get views on your videos, it's simply because your videos weren't good enough, which is a good sign because it means that you can actually create your content better. I mean, one of the worst things in the world that can happen to you is your first video gets a lot of views and you don't understand why. Instead, you need to look at this as a process. And if you're going on the process of trying to get monetized on YouTube, I wanna help you. In fact, I have several different ways that I can personally help you that you could check out right here or if you're trying to grow on any other social media platforms, I suggest you check it out because I want to help you. In fact, I quit my job working with Gary Vee to help you.